Well, it actually looks there a little bit as if Santos Gonzalez is encouraging him too because uh, Gonzalez himself up in the top 10 or 12. This is Manolo Sainz. He's not very happy at all with the TV cameras there because he's trying to keep them away from the front end of the bike race. He feels that they were getting uh, a little bit too close to the attacks of Roberto Heras and Oscar Sevilla and maybe falsifying the race. Uh, I think he will find himself with a very large fine here this afternoon. There's the race referee saying, you stay there, do not come by me. He has the ability to throw Manolo Sainz off the bike race, but uh, he must be really pretty hot under the collar right now, Manolo, because this is the moment that the Vuelta a España is turning upside down. Down. Well, our cameras are, are actually looking for, for more action now, apart from what's on the cycling track here, as we're trying to work out what is going on. This is further up the climb here now, as we're seeing the whole breakaway split up. This is Filippo Simeone. He was up in that original breakaway of 11. As I say, nobody up here is part of the race for the golden jersey, but there's a flotilla of cars back there now as they try to come together. That is Klaus Moller in second place, but the real battle is down behind us, and we know now uh, that uh, Roberto Heras has got away off the front. He's looking for three minutes, and, you know, Manolo's got to be careful here because he's needed on the race over the next two days, and I think after the way he's acting, he could find himself thrown off now and not be back up until Madrid. Uh, at the same time, it's too early for, for uh, Isreda is and Ozal to, to panic. He must not panic. The most important thing right now is to try and recompose himself, get himself back into uh, a situation where he's riding at a rhythm which is comfortable. He can afford to lose at least two minutes on this climb and still then uh, take a few risks on a very long descent down into the finishing line. We can't get any photographs of uh, Roberto Heras for the moment because it seems as if the TV motorbike that was alongside Heras has actually been stopped and he's having a hard time getting back into the race. But you see, this is a bad moment for a man who's been leaving leading this bike race for 15 days. He can't even follow the wheel of his teammate there, Serrano, who's just trying to coax him, encourage him. And I think, Bob, I have a funny feeling, Bob, that even Santos Gonzalez is trying to help him. I have a feeling, too, and they might be uh, training partners. Three Spaniards here chasing Roberto Eras, and uh, Eras is flying up the road right now. He's putting everything into this attack, and Nozal is in all kinds of agony. He's trying to follow the wheels. It looks like he is just totally out of energy. He's put so much into defending this jersey for over two weeks now. Roberto Eras has been in third place, totally calm, cool, and collected. And now the big assault here. He did damage on the Sierra Nevada and the Pandera climbs, and now he's going flat out. You can see it looks like that might be the King of the Mountain jersey it's there. Valverde and, as well, And have. Valverde along with uh, a little uh, bit of a Kelme assault right now, and Isidro knows all in all kinds of trouble. Manolo Sainz is not doing any help at all. Yes, They're yes. chasing Eras. He is flying up the mountain. It wouldn't surprise me if he caught up to Floyd Landis, his teammate, in a few moments. Landis, who was at the top of the climb now, we'll see uh, Klaus Moller there and uh, Filippo Simeone. Landis just detached from these riders. He'll wait for Eras and then fly down to the finish line and try to gain as much time as possible. Well, it's a very uh, fast and rapid descent down towards the line there. And a quick explanation of why Santos Gonzalez might have been helping there because before he moved across to the Dominic Vacanzi team, he used to be a very integral part of Team Onse. This man has ridden away right now from uh, Oscar Sevilla and he's also ridden away from uh, Alejandro Valverde. He is trying to blow this race apart. This is further down the mountain. There's Beltran. And I would think in this group we will see number 21. But it's very difficult. There's so much action going on here on the slopes of this final first category climb that we're trying to get the whole of the story as much as we can. But Roberto Heras has done what he promised he would do, gone out on the assault. He's not looking that right now, Bob. I don't think of uh, moving up into second place. He wants to try and win the Vuelta here this afternoon. He hasn't got the road left to win the Vuelta because we're coming to the top of the mountain now and Isidro Nozal has got a teammate with him to get him back on the way down this mountain. He's played his cards, but I doubt he'll gain a minute on the day. It might not be more than a minute. We don't know the exact gap between Eras and Nozal. Nozal seems to be coming in the same part of the mountain as Roberto Eras. You can see the remnants of the breakaway just in front of Roberto Eras. A minute and 11 down on Klaus Moller. Let's see where Floyd Landis is on the road. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, he was just up there just around the corner at us will get hooked up with him and then they will, will do everything they can to get to the finish line with as much time as possible it was a minute and 11 to at us let's see what the time gap is when those all gets to the top of the very last mountain on today's stage it's still a little way to go but here he is and the bunch is getting bigger around him as well and uh, 140 and counting but remember it's 111 is the figure we're taking off he's lost 33 seconds at the moment 
as we continue the climb. And the Once boys, including Gonzalez de Galeano, have got into this group now. They're massing together. And I think the right to have ridden like this now, if uh, you start pushing the golden jersey, then you're getting disqualified. Well, I'll tell you what, Igor Gonzalez de Galeano, he really is riding this bike race on a lot of courage too, isn't he, Bob? Because he looked in all kinds of difficulty just a few moments ago. And uh, we can see there is at least one minute for Roberto Jerez right now. And this group hasn't yet gone round the corner. I think we're going to look at around about one minute and 20 seconds. So it's going to be a huge battle, a huge pursuit down towards the finishing line. Well, it might also turn out to be an ace card played by Johan Brumiel to have put Floyd Landis in the first breakaway of the day, to have him ahead, to wait for Heras, and then team time trying to the line. He might be able to provide the firepower to keep him with an advantage of one and one and a half minutes by the time they get down. And that would be the sort of tactic I think we'd expect from Johan. Here we are, they're back together. So Landis has come now from the front to pick up her ass. It's all going to a plan of US Postal. And I have to take my hat off to Bunil because it's working out yet again. Now they've got firepower to at least hold their gains as they run down to the finish. Three Three. kilometers in the finish to Simeone and Moeller. Now they've started to desperately try to fight out it for the stage. They need to stay in front of the group because, of course, in the Eras-led group, there's a lot of riders that are conserving their energy. Christian Moraney especially is a very fast sprinter. He hasn't done one single turn on the front. Also, Biat Zaberg is a very good finisher himself on a stage like this. So a lot of passengers in the group being led by the Kelme team and the U.S. Postal Riders. And Moeller and Simeone, if they want to win the stage, have got to stay in front of them. It's down to about 25 seconds. And here's the chase group getting ever closer. It's going to be about the same gap. It was a minute 15, the last kilometer. It looks like they've closed one. No, it's exactly the same. So a real war on the roads into Coyola Villaba for this finish of the Volta a España. It's a wonderful pursuit, a minute 15, a minute 15, the leader's under three, the chase is going for three, the two leaders who got away on the climb, at Mola and Simeone, here they are looking very tired because that group of Roberto Heras has shut down in three kilometres at 43 seconds and is closing now very quickly. Change of direction now as we head down into town, these are the two leaders at two kilometres to go. While we are still waiting for the time check for the chase at three kilometers. But it could be at the end of this day that about a minute and a half it will be the only advantage of the race leader. Now that is going to make the time trial tomorrow extremely interesting because, of course, it's a mountain time trial. Here's the check now. Uh, this is behind the leaders at first. Well, there's a few guys in this group, and uh, just spot there, number 48, Luis Perez has also managed to get into this group of Roberto Herrera, so he too is looking to move up in the overall classification, but right now, a lot of these passengers are throwing away the possibility of a stage victory, and I think one or two riders really need to go forward right now and help the Kelme chase and also help the US Postal Service chase, because if they sit on this group for very much longer, they're going to lose any chance of winning the stage, which is why they're there. The gap was at 17 seconds, it went up to 19 seconds, so two riders against about 20 riders were able to gain two seconds in just a few meters. So if they want to have a chance to win, the Manessa riders, there's a little bit of a disaster there. It looked like uh, that Someone's might be Fabian Necker, and there's a crash, crash now ball. trying uh -huh. to gain the maximum time. It looks like uh, the Manessa rider, Francisco Mancebo, and, uh, and uh, Constantino Zavaya crashing also. He was so close to winning the stage yesterday. He's right on the limit today. You know that Postal and Kelmi are doing everything to uh, catch the breakaway, but Moeller and Simeone working very well together. A little bit of a climb here. Here they are now. They're coming up on one kilometer to go. It is going to be desperate to the finish line. They ha cannot sit on and try to rest. They have to fight it out all the way to the line. Well, Simeone, a couple of years ago, got himself a stage victory in the Vuelta a España. He's been sitting on for the last few uh, hundred meters, and he's hoping that it's going to force Klaus Moller on the front to lead out the sprint. They are still surviving by around about 15 seconds over the chasing group. And uh, surprisingly enough, uh, that group behind, uh, they've lost all the impetus, and that's really because a lot of the other guys are deciding to sit on the back and take the risk that it will all come together but I think they've actually left it just a little bit too late. Well, Simeone hasn't won a race for a couple of years, and now is his biggest chance as he tries to come off the wheel of Klaus Müller. He should hold on. His last win was a stage in the Tour of Spain in the year 2001. Two full years since he's won a stage. This could be his big moment. As he swings into the straight, he's decided to take the lead here over Klaus Müller. Judging by the face on Mola, Simeone's going to get this victory for Domina Vacanzi, the team who almost never came here. 
Mario Cipollini stayed just long enough to qualify them. Simeone's give them vindication. He gets the victory now. It's the time split that we want on the next group in as Bieterberg gets on turns. But Christian Moreni here is a good sprinter in a situation like that. Moreni, I think, is just about going to hold off Scarponi. No. Well, they're having a great day out, Demina Vacanzi. And we've started now at 16 seconds the count. And this is now going to be absolutely vital. Floyd Landis in the end are off the back. He may have been delayed a little bit in that crash. Or he may have sat up because he's given a lot of effort today. Now the seconds are counting. Just how much time has Roberto Heras gained? Because every second could win him the race tomorrow. Dario Frigo just on the back there, but this is a long finishing straight right now, and Roberto Heras did everything that he could this afternoon to try and get himself back into this race. Here's the golden jersey taking up responsibility himself on the front end of uh, his team, Onse, and it's going to be around about a one-minute mark on the line. Oh, it's a very, very good comeback. They've had to call on the two men in the top two places overall to finish it off for the team at the end of the day. A little bit of help there possibly from Lara as they come up to the line they I think have still got to turn into this straight and sprint so it's going to be a long time it might be a minute and a half and that's what we said Heras needed today if he has got a minute and a half tomorrow could be one highlight of a time trial as they race up to the line now as a team time group the minute and a half is passing by one well it's they say it's exactly one and a half minutes less 16 seconds is one minute 14 in total Let's have a look at the stage result of Filippo Simeone winning ahead of Klaus Moller, ever present Klaus Moller on this race. Perdiguero it was who came up from nowhere to get third place, Mireni and Zaberg. But the big names, where did they all finish? Ninth, Alejandro Valverde. Heras 11 plus 16 seconds, but then look, Nozal plus 1 minute 30, he loses at minute 14, and Galdiano right alongside the man uh, who is on the same team. His once big lead is now shrunk to a minute and 55 seconds. Heras himself comes into second place. Golda Gonzalez de Galdiano goes down to third, but keeps the same time deficit. Alejandro Valverde comes up to fourth, and at one minute three off Galdiano, might get him yet for a podium place in Madrid. Francisco Mancebo, he's come up to fifth. He's jumped over the top of Francisco, um, of um, uh, Bel Belta, I beg your pardon, who is up there in sixth place. This has been uh, changes amongst the leaders, but not amongst the leader. He keeps his golden jersey. He had to work harder than he's ever worked. This man, has he matured over his 16 days as leader of this tour? He's now two days away from victory, but he knows he is not safe. Tomorrow, of course, he's got the mountain time trial. So he's not going to sleep too easily tonight. And I can tell you, by the way, the contretemps with the team management, the mechanic and Manolo Science, the commissaires are sitting and they could yet be thrown off this race for their actions out on the course. Yes, it's only 11 kilometres, but it seems certain now to decide the destiny of the final golden jersey when this race ends in Madrid tomorrow. And the question is, will it be a Zidro Nozal or indeed or Roberto Heras? It's all uphill today from about 1,040 metres right through to the summit of the Abantos climb. And it's only short, but it could still alter the final destiny of this race. It is all uphill, as you can see. A little bit of respite in the middle. We finish up at around 1,530 metres. The riders are underway, and we'll catch up with that very shortly. 11.2 kilometres in total. The top is at 16.50. The average gradient 5.6, with a maximum of 16%. They say they, are, they have fitted on the back cluster 25 tooth sprockets. Uh, so that is a very low gear. Manolo Sainz has been told not to come near the Vuelta Espana now for this weekend and stay away. He was accused of bringing not only the race into dis disrepute but also the sport when he came up against the television camera here and he actually pinned the vehicle up against the wall and stopped them filming Roberto Heras and there was a huge exchange of temper and as a result and don't forget that the president of the UCI, the World Cycling Governing Body, Heim Verbruggen, was on the race. He's been fined 800 Swiss francs. He's around about 600 US dollars. He's also been told to stay away from the race. And I think he'll find further sanctions coming from the UCI. Now Miller, once again, the third time in this race, 
He's come in with the best time. He'll throw down the gauntlet now and see if anybody can pick it up. I must say, if he wins a mountain time trial, that will be an extremely good performance by this man. And he's clearly come here to win this. A little bit uncomfortable for him. It looks as though the glasses have slipped there with the sweat on his nose there. But he hits the line clearly the best time. 26.17. A minute and 12 seconds better than the man already in the start house. This is going to be desperately close for David Miller. And if it is Yeka who takes over, will be something of a surprise, I think. We didn't expect Yeka to rival David Miller on a climb like this. He is a very good climb, a strong man. He started with severe determination when he left the start house. He went through with a much better time than David Miller at the halfway check and it's going to be close and I think it's going to beat him. It looks as though he's managed to keep his effort. He knows he's on the possibility of a top time and at this sort of uh, level it could be the best time that will withstand the day here. That's not Miller watching him go by by the way but it's the best time. Continue to improve all of the way up. This is the arrival of Levi Leipheimer and a very good time indeed. This is confirmation that Levi is coming back to his form after that nasty crash in the Tour de France in July. He's riding in second place at the moment and Lysekka's time there 25.40. I don't think he'll get in inside that. It's still a fair way to go but a very determined ride here by Levi Leipheimer. He should make the top three. There's still of course the big boys to go cheered all the way up to the summit look at his face as he comes up to the line and he is now aiming at Miller's time at 26 17 he'd be inside that for sure so he's going to slot in at the moment in third place it's only a question with what time a good effort this by Levi I think he wanted to prove to himself he was returning to form 26 kilometers an hour for that climb that's good and just 33 seconds off the pace so Fabian Yecker's still best time the four Americans are now all in these are the time splits based on the time of Fabian Yecker and Leipheimer just 33 seconds slower Roberto Eras now out on the course this is all or nothing for Eras to win the Vuelta a España he lost it on the last time trial last year and I'm sure he's carrying some of that uh, bitterness with him yeah Goodness look crowd. at these crowds he's coming through and uh, he's uh, three minutes into his effort and he's starting to feel it right now a bit <laughs> here he is in the starting gate now right now for uh, the moment of truth for him he has uh, 10 seconds per kilometer in hand and uh, as long as he doesn't panic over the first couple of kilometers he should really have enough in hand to win this uh, Vuelta a España and maybe the biggest surprise winner since Melchior Maori did the same thing back in 1991 and by coincidence for the same team as well team Onse. Well, when he got the race lead about day three or four into the race, he said he now wanted another teammate to carry the weight of the golden jersey, uh, but it wasn't to be. He became uh, from the big senior super domestic to the team leader, and now he's starting the most important ride of his career. I think visually, looking at Heras, he is gaining time. It's just that we don't know how much. He's gaining time almost certainly. He's dancing on the pedals like a pure climber that he is. He's a magical man when it goes to going up hills fast. And I think today he wants to try and take out the stage victory if he can. As we go a little further up, we can see the arrival here of Felix Cardenas. Uh, again, a very good time by Felix Cardenas. It's not going to knock Fabian Yecker off the top of the leaderboard right now because it's still a long way to go. Well, I tell you what, I might be wrong. Well, it's going to be very close, but it is a very, very, very good time because it's the best. 25-22. Now, that is a great ride by Cardenas. I'm sorry for Fabian Yecker. He thought he was on for a great victory there. But that's the king of the mountains for you. He's on his own ground, and he's putting the best time. Here's Ivo gonzalez Gandiana well down in 36th place, a minute 12 down so far. So he is uh, more than likely losing his third place in the overall classification. Well, we'll wait and see, too, because remember, two minutes behind him is Roberto Heras. That's going to be a lovely carrot to try and catch Galdiano at the moment. We don't know what Valverde has done at that check. We didn't see him go through. Our cameras are swinging around six and a half kilometres to the summit now. And look, he's right on the mark. He's almost two minutes quicker. He goes through second best time at 13.26.
Well, uh, 14, so he's a minute quicker now. I've seen a lot quicker than that, though. Seemed a lot quicker. He's uh, nine seconds down on the time that was set there by uh, Fabian Yecker. Now, this is a very good uh, time check for Roberto Heras. He will realise that he's in the same time as the fastest man up the mountain so far. Uh, you can see he was faster at this point than Cardenas, but Cardenas carried on and improved, and Roberto Heras is going up this mountain as if it's flat, Bob. He's taking all kinds of risks. Very rarely do you see a man go uphill like this and have to slow down to go around the corners. Here he comes to the all-important first time check. Nozal coming through 27th position, a minute exactly on the leader, which puts him not so far. The, the GPS system is about right of 48 seconds. 14.17 for Nozal, and that compares with 13.26 of, um, of uh, Heras. So there's the situation. Heras in second, nine seconds behind the leader, and uh, coming in, Nozal at 14.17. It is going to be close, but I think he might hang on. Here comes Alejandro Valverde. Still top of the leaderboard is Cardenas at 25.22. Has Valverde done enough? It's going to be very, very close here. He's won two stages already in the mountains, and he gets it. My goodness me, it must be by a hundredth of a second. 25.22. <laughs> That's unbelievable. This is going to turn out to be a very closely fought-out race here this afternoon. Afternoon. What an incredible sprint. This kid at 23 years of age is doing well. But I'll tell you what, I think Valverde will have done enough there to have taken third place in the Tour of Spain. He thought that was remote. I think he's done it with that ride. But this man here now could be feeling the opposite effect to what he felt a year ago when he lost in a time trial. He is now so close. And I have to say it, Nozal looks absolutely beaten at the minute. He looks horrible. He's got to find something in the reserve tank. He's got to put everything into it. This could go down to a couple of seconds one way or the other, and he has to fight all the way to the finish line. He's got to try to find something from somewhere, but he's lost it all right now. And look at the difference. Roberto Eras, one kilometer to go. <laughs> well, look at the difference in the energy. Just look at the difference in the energy right now. Roberto Harris is out of the saddle. He's bouncing. He's keeping the legs going. Where the man on the right-hand side in the yellow jersey, he appears to be struggling. You can see the pain in his legs just trying to keep that gear ticking over right now. He is not on his own terrain here for the moment. Roberto Harris is. He's close enough to get the best time, which is very, very important for the win as well. What a way to take the golden jersey if that's the way it's going to be. Harris racing now, chasing Valverde's time of 25.22. That surely is good enough. 25.08. Now the clock starts. And if it counts more than two minutes, uh, plus the two minutes he's behind, then I'm afraid the golden jersey will have shifted shoulders. Well, 27.03. That's the time that this man has to cross the finishing line if he's going to stay in the golden jersey. Roberto Sorry, Bob. So bitterly disappointed at losing the Vuelta last year on the last day of the race. Nozal is going to feel that today. He's in 28th place now. It's going to be so desperately close. 27.03 was the time. It has gone by. He is out of the golden jersey as he comes to the line. Isidro Nozal, for 16 days, the leader, will slot back into second place today. And for the third year in succession, the final time trial has switched the destiny of the overall leadership. Nozal and Onse have suddenly lost their grip on this race. It's now swung over to Roberto Heras and the US Postal. 27.31, he concedes 2.23, 28 seconds too far. It's a shame really to see a champion like that lose because he fought so well, he was thrown all kinds of attacks at him in the Pyrenees. He defended it superbly in the flat individual time trials. But here on the slopes here to the summit of this incredible climb, the Alto de Abantos, he just could not get the power which Roberto Heras had. And just look at the difference in the pedaling style, how much freer, how much more energy Roberto Heras has got coming up to the line. Not only has he won himself the stage here this afternoon, but he's won himself the Vuelta a España for the second time in his career. It's all gone wrong for Onse with just the one day to go to the end. First of all, the day's result. Roberto Heras wins the stage in 25.08. Another inspired performance by the 23-year-old Valverde, just 14 seconds slower. King of the Mountains, Cardenas gets third. Then the early leader, Yeka, drops to fourth. Gonzalez there in fifth. A little bit further down, Manceba was 19th, but Igor Gonzalez de Galeano 41st. Nozal finishing 43rd. Look at those time gaps. They both lost 
their respective places in the overall classification because of that. The American riders, well, this is a good ride by Levi Leipheimer at 48 seconds, taking an eighth place today. Floyd Landis' ride looked good when he finished, uh, but he slipped away to take 32nd place. Let's go down then to the presentation now, the golden jersey. There it is. This time a year ago, he was about to lose the golden jersey and finish second. Now he's reversed that, and I think tomorrow he will win this race, of course, when we go down to Madrid. Outstanding inspired ride today. He never believed that he could remove a 1 minute 55 second deficit, and in fact he re removed a lot more than that to win this race by a reasonably clear margin tomorrow. Great performance. Roberto Heras now leading the race with a day to go. 28 seconds to the good over the 16-day leader, Zidro Nozal. Valverde has claimed a podium finish tomorrow. Gonzalez de Galdiona has fallen away into fourth. And the ever-consistent Francisco Mancebo holds fifth place. Let's have a little look further down. Beltran will finish the race in sixth place to complete a great result for U.S. Postal. Michael Rasmussen, Cardenas and Luis Perez uh, climb, claiming top ten. And after three weeks of racing, the scene is now set. The final city, Madrid, is ready to welcome home Roberto Heras as the winner for a second time since the year 2000. Let's have a look then at the map because this is the final stage and although they've uh, shortened the route slightly because of uh, various reasons on the course to make a compensation, they've taken a lap off in Madrid. So we're doing seven circuits when we get into the city. It's 90.6 miles, big interest of course in the sprint because yesterday uh, on the uh, finishing result, Valverde got the lead on points by a single point. Here it is over Eric Zabel and Pataki at 135. Those three riders could still take off the points prize in this event. Let's have a look then what has been happening on the course. This was the first sprint of the day at Aganda del Rey. After 25 kilometers, the white jersey of German champion Zabel taking it out over his teammate Stefan Wesselman. Valverde contesting it in third. That's the situation after sprint one. Zabel 155, Valverde 153. Pataki, for some reason, not in the points, didn't seem to contest it, sitting back there on the same score. And then we went on to the second sprint, which was only a, a 11 kilometers later. Now, this was a telecom demonstration. The whole team going for it, again with terrific enthusiasm. The man that won the points competition last year, Eric Zabel, simply flew away from the field. Zabel taking this one eventually, again ahead of Besserman with Torsten Heikman, his teammate, in third place. So currently then, with one sprint still to come, Zabel is now six points to the good over Valverde. Pataki not contesting these sprints. He may have conceded them and decided to just go for what would be his fifth stage win. And uh, the other two riders really don't count. Cardenas, of course, the king of the mountains. So let's now go down to the action. That's Tony Towler on the front at the minute as he tries to launch it. Nice little lead out for rival Eric Zabel. This one, Tony. Uh, fine, I'm sure Valverde will thank you for this. Because uh, Zabel is sitting there, Vesseman, <laughs> and he's now inviting him to go and take the sprint. I think that was something of a nice gesture from the Kelme team, in all honesty, well, uh, which indicates to me, Bob, that they might be saying, Eric, there's no way we can handle you, so go ahead and get the points. Well, I think you got the tactics all wrong there. I don't think he expected to see Eric Zabel <laughs> responding quite so quickly. If he could have got a gap, he would have tried to get himself maximum points and take them away. In fact, he's trying to sprint out against Eric Zabel right now because it looks to me as if Towler may well have got the four <laughs> points ahead of Eric well, Zabel. Well, I've never right. seen a tactic like that. And, uh, he's he's seemed as if he was going to set up, and then Zavo didn't sprint, and then at the last moment he came around him. Well, that was a brilliant tactical <laughs> move right there. I've never he ever seen that. Points. He did save two points. And that might points. be crucial in the final sprint, you know. <laughs> Antonio Taller is an absolute genius. <laughs> He pulled off, he waved them through, they both sat up, both Vesselman and Zabel sat up, and then Toner, Tony sprinted them again. I don't think that will make uh, Eric Zabel very happy at all to see what Tony I think he'll have a chuckle. I think Zabel's got enough points uh, advantage over uh, the, uh, the challenger, but the... Uh, the challenger Alessandro Valverde to uh, have a good laugh about that because uh, that was a good move and certainly gave us a bit of a laugh here. Look, Eric Zabel, he's a real gent. <laughs> well, he's eight points to the good now over Valverde. 
so he hasn't got to lose many places in the sprint if Valverde was to take out the win today with 25 for the win he's got to be in the first three I think uh, but uh, the way they're, they're riding here I'm not sure whether Valverde is going to contest that uh, points competition here's now the new situation Zabla has 161 Valverde 153 Pataki not getting involved at all saving his legs for what he thinks will be a fifth stage win in not too long from now 135 points for Pataki but here comes the charge now and again Alessio is trying to do something here it's making it very difficult for Pataki's team to keep control you can see that clear white jersey of the German champion Eric Zabel also now all he's doing is holding his place he doesn't have to win the stage anymore to win this race on points two kilometers ago it's absolute chaos at the front end of the main field you would never see the teams of uh, Domino Vacanti lose control of the front end of the peloton like that as we go inside the kite right now the white jersey are on the front Zabel's up into second position that's a little bit too far to the front right now here's the counter-attack this it's is going to be Lombardi. Lombardi this is for Lombardi this is the big lead out to try and get him to the line and uh, give him a happy day in his adopted country the Italian there is lined up in placing but Guidi's also trying to get in on this act too as still Pataki is perfectly placed along with Eric Zabel they are gambling as always with the sprinters they're holding their position until the last minute and we're having a job actually staying just in front of them here but as we look under the trees now still it is the men of Fasa Bortolo looking for the exact location now this could go the opposite way because slowing down like this could lead to the sprinters Rodriguez is over on the right there as well Gutierrez is centre here now and Lombardi is also still in this race with a chance now the lead out has started again but they're mixing it up now because they're breaking into the sprinters rights of Fasa Bortolo as they come round that nasty dog leg it is still a chance now but uh, Pataki is going to have to come from third wheel Zabel's left it far too late as I say that he makes his move over on the left of our picture a final kick from Zabel forget it Pataki had it all right all of the time and wins convincingly on the line he gambled his whole day on that and he threw away any possibility of winning the points competition because he wanted a fifth stage win in this year's welter well Eric Zabel started a long way down there's Roberto Harris just coming through in the yellow jersey being congratulated by his teammates so no problem at all he finished in the same time and that was the fastest lap six minutes and 33 seconds a very rapid final lap here in the very heart of Madrid well, no sign either of uh, the blue jersey uh, or the points jersey, I should say, of uh, Alejandro Valverde. Because look at this. Look how far back Eric Zabel came from. He was a long way back. He was just getting it up into gear. And he was actually moving in on Pataki all of the time as Pataki easily salutes the crowd. And uh, Freddy Rodriguez consistently up there again in third position. But you cannot beat this man right now. And Phil, that takes it up to win number 26 for the season and number five in the Vuelta a España absolutely amazing he makes it all look so easily doesn't he but this is the man who is the best sprinter of the year but tacky wins the last lap was the quickest lap Zabel did well to get second and at the end of the day is a clear winner of this race on points as he was one year ago the sprints of course getting their day in madrid for tacky getting the better over Zabel, who finished very quickly but not quite quick enough and freddy rodriguez another good third place for fred there ahead of usoff and edo let's go down onto the podium alessandro bataki oh the trophies are getting bigger by the minute here and he's got plenty of them now he's had a wonderful season and he's won right at the end and he's finished his first grand tour of the year now moving on to the combine competition, Alethanda Valverde deservedly won this, the highest place rider in all of the competitions combined. Felix Cardenas, the king of the mountains, he's finished in second and the winner of the race coming into third place there, Roberto Heras and stage winner there, Rasmussen and Ozel, fourth and fifth. And there he is, uh, I think the big star, the big discovery of this year's welter, Alejandro Valverde, his second year, just over 23 years of age, and he's going to be a top boy in the years to come. Let's move on to the points competition. This provided us with a real good battle throughout these three weeks. In the end, the, the grand old man of sprinting, Eric Zabel, repeating his victory of one year ago, uh, winning by 20 points in the end over Valverde and Pataki. So... The jersey which we normally know as the king of the mountains in other races is the points prize here and Eric Zabel has won it again.
In the King of the Mountains competition, he was a very solid leader, never really challenged. From Colombia, Felix Cardenas getting in the end 204 points to anybody else's 112. Almost double there, wasn't it? Aitor Erda, Joan Horach in third place. And there he is, Cardenas having uh, really the last few days more or less off, as he knew he was going to win this award as he came down into Madrid. Let's have a look at the team. Not good reading, I'm afraid, for Anse. They led almost all of the way, losing the lead after the time trial yesterday to Ibanesto.com, the defending team champions, and losing it by only one minute and three seconds. The two top teams both retiring from the sport of cycling at the end of this year, and that is certainly very, very sad indeed. Kelme, a distant third. But these are the three men that take away major honours in this year's Vuelta España. Roberto Heras, who won for Kelme in the year 2000, is the winner. Nozal, who led it for 16 days in the end, looks quite happy, I think, with his second place. And Valverde, he claimed that third place slot 